Welcome to another edition of the Backyard Professor Podcast Series, where I get to do all the talking, and you get to do all the listening and the learning. I'm Carrie Schertz, the Backyard Professor. Hey, I have great news for you. I finally found my first edition of Hugh Nibley's book, Abraham in Egypt. <laughs> and of course, now that I've gone back through some of my other podcasts, I can see where I'm hop, skipping, and jumping. Whoops. I didn't mean to. I'll uh, I'll get back on track here. Although it's it's can't help but be a good review, that's for sure. There's lots of material to learn in both the first and the second edition. Um, and you know I've been doing something interesting uh, this last several months. I've decided I'm going to read the Bible in four languages: Hebrew and Greek and German and English. And of course I'm using my interlinears. And what this is going to do is help me expand my vocabulary. And as you read each of the uh, each of the stories in the Bible or the uh, the theological discourses or whatever it is you're reading. It's really remarkable to see the various uh, nuances of meaning and shades of ideas with the uh, with the different languages. It's really quite fascinating. And I I have uh, the Schottstein edition of the Book of Psalms, and it's really a good little edition. I take it with me everywhere I go. I'm constantly trying to you know pick up a word here, pick up a word there. And uh, the other day. Uh, I just had an inkling. I thought, well, you know, reread the first psalm. And so I did. And I reread the first psalm. And while I was rereading the very first psalm, Abraham came thundering into my mind. Every every sentence I read, I thought, well, that sounds like uh, that sounds like Abraham. That's that's what Abraham didn't do, or hey, that's what Abraham did do, or oh, hey, that's the relationship of Abraham and Yahweh with the uh, covenant, and oh, hey, that's that's the implication of that, and so on and so forth. Abraham just came booming into my mind. So I want to read the first psalm to you again as a beautiful summary. It's a perfect depiction of the entire life of Abraham, of his attitude, of the famous ten trials of Abraham, and of his covenant with God, and of his offspring being as numerous as the stars and the sands of the sea, and the famous uh, rabbinical tales and legends of Abraham, where Wherever he went, it did not matter where. He was always planting trees, not staying to reap the fruit and the benefit of the fruit of the trees, but planting them and moving on, leaving him to others to enjoy the fruits of his labor. And he was always digging wells. He never drove a hard bargain, as Hugh Nibley has said in his uh, Abraham the Creation Account and the, the Drama. One of his last great speeches, the uh, creation drama that uh, Nibley gave. But this first psalm, this is really quite a beautiful summary. So let me see if I can trip through the Hebrew here with you and share with you this. This is a perfect overall. Ashrei ha'ish asher lo halach ba'atzat reshaim. Praiseworthy is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked. The Reshaim is the wicked. Uvedetic Hataim Lo Amad. And blessed is the man who does not stand in the path of the sinful. Uvemoshav Leitzim Lo Yashav. And blessed is the man who does not sit in the session of the scorners. This Abraham never did. He really never did. Even with his meeting with Melchizedek, when the king of Sodom uh, wanted to enrich Abraham, and Abraham wouldn't deal with the king of Sodom at all. He would not sit in the session of the scorners, nor stand in the path of the wicked. Very remarkable summary here. Ki'im. Betorat Adonai Hefetso. Rather, his desire, the righteous man's desire, is in the Torah of the Lord. Uva Torato Yehege Yomam Velila. He meditates in his Torah 
by day and by night. The haya keets shatul al palgai main. He shall be like a tree that is deeply rooted alongside brooks of water. This is so interesting because in the Genesis Apocrypha, and I've been reading Joseph Fitzmyer's uh, translation of the Genesis Apocrypha out of the Dead Sea Scrolls, and Abraham even has dreams that he and Sarah are different trees, the palm tree and the cedar tree. and It's just so fascinating how all these various phases of Abraham's life start popping out when we read this first psalm. It's really quite beautiful. Asher pero yitain beito ve alehu lo yibul. This tree, deeply rooted alongside the brooks of water, it yields its fruit in its season, and the leaf never withers on the tree of the man who does certain things and doesn't do other things, as the psalm is describing. Ve chol asher. Ya ese yetzli hach, and everything that the righteous man desires will succeed. Lo hein harashiom, not so the wicked. Ki im kamotz asher tidfenu ruach, rather, like the shaft that is driven by the wind, that's the fate of the wicked. Al hain lo yakumu reshaim ba mishpat. Therefore, the wicked will not be vindicated in the judgment. The ba mishpat, the judgment of God, will find the wicked rootless, essentially, is what this psalm is saying. Abraham was not rootless, was he? No, <laughs> not by any means. Vehataim ba tzadat. Zadikim. The sinful in the assembly of the righteous. It just doesn't happen. That's why he will not be vindicated. Ki odea Adonai Derek Zadakim. And the reason why the wicked won't be vindicated in judgment is because Hashem attends to the way of the righteous. The Derek Reshaim. To avoid, while the way of the wicked will be doomed. And you can think of the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah. And uh, one I see that Melchizedek, the king of Salem, according to some translations and interpretations, when he met uh, Abraham, Melchizedek prospered. I mean, the Joseph Smith translation on the uh, Genesis meeting of uh, Melchizedek and Abraham is extremely interesting. And I, I'll touch on that also in other podcasts, but uh, this first psalm is really a good epitome, it's a good summary of the entire uh, life of Abraham, and it reflects beautifully his attitude of, instead of standing with the sinful and the wicked in their paths and in their cities, and trying like crazy to gain as much money as he can, no, Abraham turned to Yahweh. And, of course, huge blessings flowed, even though Abraham had trials. Now, the trial, (laughs) the trial of Abraham that Hugh Nibley is emphasizing in his book, Abraham in Egypt. Now, I have this marked that my last podcast that I uh, elaborated on Nibley's book was in chapter 4, Pharaoh and Abraham, Where is Thy Glory, page 77. I noticed the last couple of podcasts, I've kind of jumped ahead in the second edition, so I'm kind of out of sync here, but that's okay. It never hurts to go back and forth and back and forth and review some things. So let me uh, let me describe this idea of kings and priests, this idea of Abraham and Pharaoh. It is such an odd story, because most of us just simply don't run across it in the biblical record. Uh, It's not there. Not like it is in the book of Abraham, nor the extra legends. Now, now we do get this idea of uh, uh, Abimelech, King of 